I really enjoy using metalwork in my gardens. And if you've seen any of the other videos we've done, you'll probably see metal elements creeping in in quite a few of them. And the more gardens I design, the more I tend to use metal for many different features, perhaps as opposed to wood. And I think that's because you can just do any shape with metal. It can be lovely bands, it can be beautiful scrolls, it can be finials. It really is only limited by your imagination. And when you're designing something with metal, such as a pergola or an archway, it can be much lighter, it's much thinner um, than wood, which is often quite large sections, which can look much more clumpy. It lasts for almost ever, as opposed to wood. So it really does stand the test of time. You can design it, spend a bit of money on it, and it's there forever for you to enjoy. And also it can be pretty much any colour. And that is, I mean, that's the same as wood, it can be any colour, but somehow with metal, the colours seem more iridescent and they're more lively. I think arbours are sort of quintessentially perfect in many gardens because it creates a lovely place where you can sit that's slightly enclosed, where you have beautiful views out over the garden. And so for something like that, metalwork is perfect. And we often do them so they're quite open and then we might incorporate hall beam arches to help reinforce the metalwork. We might make them more enclosed with more trellis work, like we've used this type of trellis style work on other arbours and then we clad them with climbers. Sometimes we just have the metal framework and then we have stainless steel wires running round inside them to train the plants onto. So they can be quite small, so you can just get a tiny cafe table in them, or you can have larger ones where you have perhaps several benches inside them. But they form a great visual focus for a garden and it makes it such an inviting focus it's a point that it encourages you to come in and sit in it and also with climate change it does help it shields you from the hot burning sun it keeps the wind out and it's it's much more ephemeral somehow than um, a shed or a garden structure and visually I think it often looks a lot better. One of the most recent things we've just designed and had made is a swing seat and that's worked out very well. We've done a lot of furniture, both tree seats, garden sofas, chairs and tables of all shapes and sizes. Metal containers, again, circular, square, any amount of, of styles. And I think for plant containers they are particularly good because they are so strong and in that situation where you've got wet soil and something that's growing and getting bigger you really do need something strong and long lasting. Retaining walls are another great thing. We've done an amphitheatre in an old wall garden that was on a slope and when we arrived at the scene it, would, it had pigs in it and it was just a muddy walled garden. Um, so what we did is we made a series of terraces for an amphitheatre which we retained with rusted metal and that is now used for events um, and concerts and things like that, an outdoor events arena and it's perfect for retaining and it's quite an inexpensive way to retain soil. When we were designing Horatio's garden for the hospital in Oswald Street for Spinal Unit, um, obviously it was important that when guests came to visit people that were there, they would have somewhere private because these people might be stuck in the hospital for many, many months. And so arbours really came into their own there. So we made sort of slightly compartmentalised spaces that gave them privacy, where they felt enclosed and safe and they could chat intimately with their guests. When I'm doing something different with metal, and most things we do, it is something different. I try never to do the same thing again and again and again. And so when we were doing the archways at Horatia, we did little twigs on the main archways to give it a feel that it was almost a growing archway. And also those little twigs would be brilliant for putting the climbers on because it would give them something to attach to the climbing plants. But when we actually finished the structure, we thought they looked so nice without the embellishment of plants, we did wonder whether they were really necessary at all. 
And that's the thing with metal work. You know, you want to experiment, try things out, and then keep an open mind to maybe adjust little twists when you're doing these things. We also used archways because we had two lines of quite unattractive buildings and in order to deflect the eye we did a row of archways running down the view so it made it look much more dramatic and it helped focus the eye on the end magnolia tree rather on, than on the grotty buildings either side. We also used large baseless containers at Horatio so we brought the trees up more at eye level again to screen the not so attractive hospital buildings and then as a little touch we did raised beds and we used metal straps on the wood just to add a little bit of detailing. Sometimes if we're doing a garden door or a garden gate we might have really big strap hinges that are, 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 are over big but they just look like a, an attractive element to embellish the door or the gate. Sometimes we just use finials, so we might do an artichoke finial made from little leaves of metal and we put those on top of an archway or a little arbour or something like that. So it doesn't have to be something massive, it can just be something tiny to really lift something and give it that special look that's more considered. So I love using metal and I've got lots of examples and prototypes in my own garden. When I add up the amount of metal items that I've got in my garden, I, it's really quite surprising. But um, it's a bit eclectic, really. I'll do a design for someone else, and I think that looks really nice, and so I squeeze one in here too. And so it's just accumulated over the years. And you might think it's a massive amount of metal, but because it's so light, and so a lot of it is actually combined with planting, it doesn't seem too much of it, I don't think. Funnily enough, perhaps my favourite thing are my metal cloches here. We designed them for Chelsea um, and I think they look lovely, they're useful, they add interest to the vegetable garden and they're perfect for just giving some vulnerable plants a little bit of cover to bring them on. Then here I've got the estate gates which are a more standard design. Um, this is the estate metal fencing and we've added the loops and the curves and the finials. Um, but it just defines the walkway down into the meadow. And this is quite a strong point. When you come up the drive, you see this whole view down into the meadow beyond. Then I can also see the metal tree guards. I've got embryonic trees in them, but they will look lovely. And obviously they serve to protect the trees from the cattle, which would eat them in seconds because they just love eating trees. I thought they would look very stark because the trees are so small, they're only planted last year and are quite tiny, but actually I think as a structure they do give that parkland feel, even though they haven't got these wonderful big trees growing out of them yet. Then I can see the chicken pen there and we've got the gate and the high fencing is done with metal bars because it just looks lighter and it keeps the fox out, which is pretty important. Then I've got little gates into the woodland, to the pigsty. I've got my arches behind me, which I'm training the apples over, um, which lead into the fruit garden. Then I've got my pergola over my sitting area, um, which is made from obelisks. And I think that really defined the sitting area. Before we had it, it was a lovely sitting area, but then we put the pergola over the top with the bars and it just creates a better sense of enclosure somehow to that eating space. It makes it more defined. Then we've got the table, which we've covered with galvanized metal. That was an oak table and it was 20 years old and it was starting to rot. So we just put over the galvanized metal sheeting on the top and then it protects it and gives it a longer life. But also, when we did that, it bounces more light in because it can look very flat, an oak table in the winter when it's damp, but the metal top just really works well. Then we've got the fruit cage, um, which I think is just perfect. It's very light, it's rusted metal. It looks quite large at the moment, but it's got a little cherry tree, a dwarfing cherry rootstock in it. And I think when the cherry fills out, it will come into its own more. 
Then I've got the archway down through the hazels that lead out again to the meadow, which just, again, they just define the walkway and it enables me to train the arches of the hazel over the top. When the hazel is trained over the metal bars, you hardly see them at all. Um, they're just really a support. If I didn't have any formwork there, I think it would look much more of a scratchy arch. But by having the strong shape of the metal bar, then it helps define it more. And really the same with the arbor. So that is just quite an organic shape and the, the bay is just tied into it and you hardly notice it, but again, it forms a nice definite shape. What else have I got? I've got the obelisks running down the pleach trees. I've got the obelisks in the courtyard garden. I've got several styles of metal containers, baseless metal containers, um, which just lift the plants and make them look better. I've got table and chairs in the courtyard. It goes on and on. I'm a bit like a magpie, but because metal is so light, I don't think it looks overdone. One of the basic things when you're designing with metal is knowing what sections and sizes that you can actually get. And one of the commonest things that people use are the flat steel bar. And so this is quite a chunky steel bar and it is something like, um, it's about 8mm by about 38mm thick. So that's quite a heavy bit of bar. And if I was designing an arch and I wanted to do one out of this, I could then make my arch so as you walked along it, it was bent this way round. So you would see the 38 mil size. So it's quite obvious, it's quite noticeable. Or I could get the metal worker to bend the bar the other way so the arch was bent this way round and you would only see this 8 mil bar when you walk down the archway. So that's a decision you want to make aesthetically. Do you want it to look heavier by seeing the flat bar bent like that, which is a bit more expensive and slightly more difficult than bending it like that. So you see the thinner side and you get the arch going over like that. The difference structurally is also quite marked because a bar that's bent that way isn't really going to move so much whereas one bent that way it can flex a bit so you do need a, a decent size to make sure it doesn't flex too much you can also get round sections also the hollow tubing and that is much lighter than the bar so less expensive and also you can shape it into any shape and so this is what we use for the vaulting um, at the school this is all made of the, the hollow tubes If I'm designing something in a public space like the vaulting, then I will get an engineer to check over that I've used stout enough sections of metal because you will get people swinging on it, larking around. And so it's got to be safe, it's got to be structurally sound. And the footings, the concrete that holds it in place must be a, a decent enough spec. So in the private garden, it's slightly less important, but you still obviously want it to be safe. So then you get the square sections, apart from the round sections. So I've got a little square section bar here, which is quite light. And this is only a centimetre square and solid compared to this, which is a hollow section bar, which is much lighter. But I don't like these so much. These look much more industrial somehow than the round. Um, although if you're doing the industrial luxe look and you like that, then maybe that might be one that you would go for. So really just think how much you want to see. So when you're doing a wood for a pergola, you would have something like 100, 150 mil size. But with, a, with something of metal, it would be way, way thinner, much lighter looking. So there's a vast difference in the aesthetics of the metal and the wood. So metalwork is often used to edge, to edge gravel and borders, between gravel and borders. 
it's used um, along around the edges of grasses. You particularly see this in the Cambridge and Oxford colleges. They have the metal edging to edge the grass. So you can get a very clean, sharp edge to the grass. So this is what we've just used to edge the gravel in the courtyard. And this is six millimetres thick. So this is quite a thick, sturdy edging. You can get much, much lighter versions of this, but this is a, a nice bulky one. But obviously if you're edging a gravel driveway and cars and lorries are likely to go over it, then you do need this six millimetre thickness. If you lose it much thinner, they will just buckle when it's driven over. And this is 100 mil deep, so it's quite deep. Now, sometimes the edging goes right down flush with the top of the grass, but where we've used it out there, we've left it, left it slightly proud because I actually wanted to see it. And so when we're doing retaining structures with um, metal, such as the amphitheatre that we've done, then obviously we use this sort of size metal, but much deeper. And we fix it onto metal pegs, which go behind the metal edging. So this one is just mild steel, it's just the metal, and I've let it go rusty, and that will be fine. Now, some people love the rusted look in the garden, and I've got the rusted look on my fruit cage. Now, that is fine, that is fairly stable, but if you want a really stable, rusted metal look, then you are probably better off using something like Corten steel. Now, Corten steel, it's an actual brand of steel, which they have refined and it is a stabilized rust so it lasts much longer than ordinary mild steel that just goes rusty but obviously it is much more expensive than rusty mild steel and and it probably looks more it looks more consistent rusty than mild steel that goes rusty but both um, look good now the other great thing about metal is the color so there are many, many options. Now here I've got some samples which we did. Um, a lot of the furniture and things I've used, I've got this acid etch finish. And this I think is fabulous because it's completely free of maintenance. Once it's done, that's it, it stays it for life. Um, and I think it looks very like lead because it's got that sort of nice powdery, dusty look. And on the obelisks in the front, we've actually put little lead discs on them, which are made of real lead. And when you see it on the actual acid etch metal, you can't see the difference. It's incredibly like lead, but obviously a fraction of the price. So how do we get this lovely finish? So what we do is we hot dip galvanize it. Now with mild steel or metal, which is what we've been talking about, it will go very rusty if you don't treat it and it will slowly corrode. So here, um, with this edging, we will let it just go back naturally and corrode and go rusty. But with this bar, what we did is it was galvanized. Um, and then after a week or so, we actually spray it with a tea wash. Now this is an acid. And so you do need to wear the full kit if you do it and goggles and gloves. And then you just let it go off and you can put it outside for a week or a couple of days and you will see it will go black. Now, after it goes black, it will then slowly go to the powder. And that is the finish and it stays like that. It's stable and iridescent and it bounces light off in winter. So for furniture, I love when you look out in a wet gray garden and you have the furniture bouncing light off, I think it looks a lot more attractive than wet timber. Now, once you've got the galvanized finish, you can paint it. Now you wouldn't paint straight onto galvanized metal because it just will not adhere to it. So in order to paint it, and we do paint a lot of metal containers, we do acid etch it first, and then we leave it for a bit and then we paint it. And there are metal paints in all manner of colors and then it stays on for, for many years and it is quite a durable finish. But also we like to do faux other metal type finishes. So on the flip side of this, I've actually done a verdigris finish. Now this is actually called mint um, and it is from a paint company and a type of paint called liquid metal. And that's made, if you go onto the robco.co.uk website, you can see all the different metal finishes they do. And it's actually an acrylic metal paint. So it's liquid metal and you just spray it on. So that half I've done the um, mint colour 
and on the other half I've done I think it's called blackened bronze and that I think is a lovely finish it's a lovely patina to it and again it's an acrylic finish like all the liquid metal paints sprayed on and it looks almost like a sort of dull copper dull bronze I think and it's very nice on pergolas or whatever really um, and so that's two options you can of course put real gold leaf on if you wanted to so you'll paint it with size after galvanizing that's the sort of gluey stuff and then you would actually put the gold leaf on the top using leaf gold leaf high carrot and that would then look like gold now you might not want to do furniture in gold and it would scratch it wouldn't be very durable but you might want to do finials or something like that in gold and that can look quite fun so if you feel inspired to try something out with metalwork i think the number one thing to do is to find a blacksmith or metal worker who likes experimenting so both phil from manor welding and tom hitchcock from getting mill are brilliant at that i can fling them an email with a sketch on it of what i want and they'll embrace the challenge they'll say well let's just alter it like this to make it more stable or more structurally sound or we could use this section metalwork or whatever and then we mock, mock up a prototype and take it from there. The more I use it the more I love it and I become more adventurous. Each thing just adds something different to your garden rather than going out and just buying something off the peg which you've seen a thousand times before.